My name's Guy Kesterman. I've been a professional biking kit tester for over 25 years. And today, the bike I'm talking about is my specialised chisel project build, uh, which I built up a couple of years ago. But as I rigged it for riding the brand new Cycling UK Trouse Early route across Snowdonia. And it's very much a mountain bike route. There's a lot of climbing and some quite tough technical sections as well. So it really suits lower gears, bigger tyres and a bit more controlled riding position. Uh, I mean, you could do it on a gravel bike, but it's going to be seriously tough. So I just thought I'd talk you through this bike and the modifications I made to its normal trim, which is a little more sort of race gravel setup, uh, but closer to a standard mountain bike, to be honest, in this format. Uh, just so, you know, if anybody's got any questions about what I rode on the route, or they're just interested in the progression of this build over the past couple of years and where it's ended up now, then here's where you'll find that information. So, first things first, let's talk about the frame quickly. It's an alloy frame, it's not carbon fibre, but it is pretty light. It's about 1800 grams uh, for the XL version that I'm running here. So, you know, 1000 grams heavier, kilo heavier than the very lightest mountain bike frames you can get. But you can see from the tube set, super slim all the way through. And what that gives it, which is not something you get from a lot of aluminium bikes or even carbon fibre race bikes, an exceptionally smooth and compliant and comfortable ride. So I'd actually characterise the ride of this as far more like sort of titanium or steel bikes, really. In fact, I often say it's the nicest riding titanium bike I've ever tested, even though it's actually obviously alloy. And, you know, because it's uh, alloy, although this is a special limited edition colourway, it does keep the overall price of the bike down. You can actually get complete bikes from about £1,500 up. Uh, fully kitted, ready to go. Like I say, this is a project build-up, so it has got some fairly fancy bits on it. I mean, let's declare the uh, rather silly Syncros all-in-one carbon handlebar and stem. As you can see, barely any stem at all, which combined with that steep head angle, this is a first-generation chisel. They've actually slackened it slightly since this one, but it does make the handling a little bit hysterical, and it means there are only certain lights that you can fit on the handlebars because it's not round so you can't put a standard clamp on there and I'm running the GPS on there as well but I mean a it just looks really good and also it means that when I've got this in super light trim I can get it down to sub nine kilos which for an alloy framed hardtail is frankly ridiculous uh, other things that help with that are SID ultimate forks uh, that's the lightest 100 mil travel suspension fork you can get at the moment but again, there's cheaper versions that work just as well. In fact, arguably better for endurance work because this little Charger race day damper on there is very, very small. And uh, although I have had zero issues with it, a larger damper will probably give a smoother ride when it's loaded and uh, over longer distances. And I'm also running specialized Roval carbon control wheels. These are the controls, they're not the control SLs, but they're still a very, very light carbon wheel. We've still got a 30 mil carbon rim on there, and I'm also running ridiculously right, light Renegade S-Works tyres. So they're sub 700 gram tyres on the front. I went for the slightly uh, tougher control version on the rear, but you can see very little tread, uh, pretty fast rolling. Actually, to be honest, while I was riding around, I wished I'd gone for the, uh... oh no, sorry. I tell a lie, it is the S-Works on the back as well. I think I'm quite glad I didn't know that when I was hammering around the trails. Uh, <clears throat> but I do run an insert in the rear tyre just to provide a little bit of extra protection against pinch flats, certainly as I was running a uh, bike packing saddlebag on the back. So, And also, I was riding long days in tough conditions, so I wasn't quite as alert and able to avoid stuff as I might have been. Uh, back to the, the wheels, yeah, you've got a DT Swiss hub on there. Super reliable, not the fastest engaging, but just a great hub for long mileages. And like I say, these S-Works tyres, even though they're paper thin and really, really light, they held up really, really well around the slate. Um, probably, I mean, I am taking a risk, obviously running something so light, but with a lot of climbing and some road sections as well, you know, their lightness and responsiveness definitely helped over the course of the two days that it took me to ride the uh, over the two days that it took me to ride the route. 
The big change I made, normally I run kind of a road size cassette on the back to really get the weight down, I normally run a 1036, but with a uh, SRAM Red rear road mech on the back, uh, but this time I went for a full 1052 tooth Eagle uh, cassette on the back, so lots of big climbing gears, and I was really, really glad I did. I was already in bottom gear uh, coming out of Chorus about half an hour into the ride, so I was like, I'm really, really glad that I actually put the uh, the bigger cassette on there. And as you can see, I'm running Axis wireless gears from SRAM. That's the GX. But it just makes, if I'm switching gears around all the time, it just helps with the versatility of the bike. So you've got your, it's the older type controller there. Obviously the new Eagle transmission has come out recently, but it's actually a really neat install and I like the way it works. Then finishing off the drive chain, you've got the new era crank from Raceface. I mean, I don't really need an ultralight crank um, with carbon fiber arms on a bike packing bike. I don't think anybody does. But again, it helps keep the overall bike weight down. I'm doing two tough, really long, you know, 100 kilometer plus days through the mountains was a brilliant opportunity to test this crank out. And I'm delighted to say that though it was creaking to start with, everything settled down nice and quiet, zero issues of drive, plenty of stiffness. Uh, yeah, no problems at all. It's got a race face uh, bottom bracket behind there as well. But like I say, I was a little worried, initial creak on it, but it's been fine since. And good old faithful Hope Union XC pedals down on there, which just for consistent release and reliability, just the best pedals I've used. Uh, I mean, obviously, a lot more expensive than Shimano, which could be a similar performance most of the time, but super hard-wearing cleats, super hard-wearing pedals, and for marathon work like this, you just want something you can totally rely on. And talking about things you can totally rely on, that brings me to these Arundel bottle cages. Crazy expensive, very light uh, carbon fibre cages, but there's one thing I hate when I'm riding, it's having to go back and... Uh, but if there's one thing I hate when I'm riding, it's bottles flying out and me having to go back. I'm actually going to have to put the camera down, which kind of makes the point of just how secure they are. But there we go. Arundel carbon cages. I put them on every gravel bike. I Well, every bike with a bottle cage I run. Uh, lucky to have two of them. So, yeah. Plenty of water, even though it was a wet old ride, if you've watched the live ride video, you'll know that it was great to know that I was always gonna look down and there was still gonna be two bottle cages there. And little sort of enduro style hack, that's a lurry frame strap running two inner tubes there because it's just a neat, easy way to store them and they're, they're ready to go should I have punctured. But like I say, I got lucky. Uh, as you can see, there are sections of the bike that aren't covered in filth. That's almost certainly thanks to this Crud XL Fender. I mean, they sponsor the channel, but they are one of the best fenders you can get in terms of uh, keeping the mud off your face and, in my case, off the lens of the GoPro. And because they fit on with O-rings around the fork leg, they're really, really easy to switch between bikes. And while I've been using the Crud XL guard for a long, old time, uh, I did take the risk of putting another couple of new test bits on it. These new Ergon grips, they're a stick-on grip, they're not clamped in any way, but they're designed to give uh, maximum kind of comfort for your hands and they're lightweight as well. I have to say zero complaints about them. They stayed nice and grippy even when I was sopping wet. And uh, yeah, they are probably, I mean, unfortunately the build, you know, the color doesn't really go with the build, but I might well be moving them across to other bikes in future because they certainly worked for what they were supposed to work and zero slipping even in the wet. And I also use Ergon's new all-road saddle because I needed to test that. And again, uh, it's designed as a kind of distance saddle for gravel. So there's a little bit more squish and cushioning in it than there normally is. And then you've got that center section cut out there for your particular plumbing. And uh, again, bit of a risk jumping on a fresh saddle for a long ride, but yeah, didn't have any problems at all. Uh, I put lights on just in case. I didn't need to use them in the end, although I ran the rear one. Uh, when I was on the very, very short sections of road there are just for a bit of extra peace of mind and because the conditions were pretty bad for visibility whether you were driving or riding. So got that little uh, night Rider bullet on the back and then, like I say, 
these curious sort of geometrically shaped handlebars require a certain a certain type of bracket on the front so i've just got a little blackburn day blazer on the front there not a massive amount of power but just light and again totally dependable in fact the only thing i had a slight issue with while i was riding uh were these hope xcr brakes again super light brakes um very good in a short burst cross-country riding situation but dragging them for a long time on uh, steep descents particularly coming off the back of uh, the slate mines into pain machno i did actually get some rear brake fade it's it's a long time since i've had rear brake fade on a hydraulic brake but uh they were they were suffering on the really long drags just because I couldn't really let the brake, couldn't let the bike run because I was trying to protect the tires and because the bike was loaded, you know, I couldn't sort of brake on off, on off, on off like you normally do. Those are some big old drags and that smaller reservoir capacity and the smaller brake as well did suffer a bit, but only happened a couple of times and I'm not unduly worried about it for the purpose of the brake. So there we go. That's my uh, Trans Snowdonia specialized chisel build oh one thing i should say this as it comes in about 11.1 kilos uh, with no water in the bottles but with the tubes on and the lights and everything else like that i just hung it on the scales so again still a very very lightweight rig but pretty much ideal uh for the uh hills and mountains of snowdonia although probably would suggest you going heavier on the tires just for a bit more peace of mind but obviously any questions you've got about the build, about the bike, or just my approach to how I change bikes for different missions, then uh, hit me up in the comments below. But for now, massive thanks to Cycling UK for getting me involved in the Trails Uri, oh, I can never say that right, Trails Uri uh, Snowdonian route, uh, thanks to Giro Cycling UK, to PT's products, they definitely help the chain keep running sweet, Crud XL Fenders, and uh, Hebtroco, and talk nutrition products for a sponsoring the channel and also they played a big part in making this ride a lot easier and massive thanks to my patreon subscribers who support me on a monthly basis via the patreon channel so if you want extended early and behind the scenes reviews and you want them all ad free then get yourself onto patreon for a small monthly pledge make sure you subscribe click for notifications and give this a video thumbs give this Make sure you subscribe, click for notifications, and give this video a thumbs up like if you've enjoyed it, and tell your mates about the channel. And make sure you come back, watch regularly. There's all sorts of content on here, from uh, bike tests to reviews to uh, new routes that I'm working on with Cycling UK. But for now, I'm Guy Kestivan on Guy Kest TV, talking about my specialised chisel custom build for the Cycling UK Trous Uri Cross Snowdonia mountain biking route.